Since we talked about sort of the uh, physical reality, I'd love to ask your vision of the future with with robots in, in this physical reality. So many of the in kinds of intelligence you've been speaking about would empower robots to be more effective collaborators with us humans. So um, since uh, Tesla's Optimus uh, team has been showing us some progress on humanoid robots, I think it really reinvigorated the whole industry and that's, that I think Boston Dynamics has been leading for a very, very long time. So now there's all kinds of companies, Figure AI, obviously Boston Dynamics. Um, Unitree. Unitree. Uh, but there's like a lot of them. It's there's great. Them. It's great. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, I love it. Uh, so do you think there'll be uh, millions of humanoid robots walking around soon? Not soon, but it's gonna it's gonna happen. Like the next decade, I think is gonna be really interesting in robots. Like uh, the the emergence of the robotics industry has been in the waiting for you know ten twenty years without really emerging, other than for like you know kind of pre-programmed behavior and stuff like that. Um, and uh, and the main issue is again the Moravec paradox like you know how do we get the system to understand how the world works and and kind of you know plan actions and so we can do it for really specialized tasks um, and uh, the way Boston Dynamics goes about it is you know basically with a lot of um, handcrafted dynamical models and careful planning uh, in advance which is very classical robotics with a lot of innovation a little bit of perception um, but it's, it's still not like they can't build a domestic robot Mm -hmm. Right, um, and you know we're still some distance away from completely autonomous level five driving, mm -hmm. uh, and we're certainly very far away from having uh, you know level five autonomous driving by a system that can train itself by driving twenty hours like any seventeen year old. Uh, so until we have uh, again world models. Systems that can train themselves to uh, understand how the world works. Uh, we're not going to we're not going to have significant progress in robotics. So, a lot of the people working on robotic hardware at the moment are are betting or banking on mm -hmm. the fact that AI is going to make sufficient progress towards that. And they're hoping to discover a product in it too. Is a yeah. Before you have a really strong world model, there'll be an almost strong world model. And um, people are trying to find a product in a clumsy robot, I suppose, like not a perfectly efficient robot. So there's the factory setting where uh, humanoid robots can help automate some sure. aspects of the factory. I think that's a crazy difficult task because of all the safety required and all this kind of stuff. I think in the home is more interesting, but then you start to think, I think you mentioned loading the dishwasher, right? Yeah. Like, I suppose that's one of the main problems you're working on. I mean, there's you know, uh, cleaning up, yeah. <laughs> cleaning the house, uh, clear, clearing up the table after a meal, sure. uh, washing the dishes, you know, all those tasks, you know, cooking. I mean, all the tasks that you know, in principle, could be automated, but are actually incredibly sophisticated, really complicated. But even just basic navigation around an a space full of uncertainty. That sort of works. Like you can sort of do this now. <laughs> navigation is fine. Well, navigation in a way that's compelling to us humans is, is, is a different thing. Yeah, it's not going to be, you know, necessarily. I mean, we have demos actually because, you know, there is a so-called embodied AI group mm -hmm. at, at FAIR. And, uh, you know, they've been not building their own robots, but using commercial robots. Um, and you can, you can tell a robot dog, like, you know, go to the fridge mm -hmm. and they can actually open the fridge and they can probably pick up a can in the fridge and stuff like that and and bring it to you. I, you know, so it can navigate, it can grab objects as long as it's been trained to recognize them, which, you know, vision systems work pretty well nowadays. Um, but, but it's not like a completely, you know, general robot that would be, you know, sophisticated enough to do things like clearing up the dinner table. <laughs> Yeah, to me, that's an exciting future uh, of getting humanoid robots, robots in general in the home, more and more, because that gets uh, humans to really directly interact with AI systems in the physical space. And in so doing, it allows us to philosophically, psychologically explore our relationships with robots. It can be really, yeah. really, really interesting. 
So I hope you make progress on the whole uh, Japa thing soon. Well, I, <laughs> I mean, I hope I hope things can you know work as uh, as planned. Um, I mean, again, we've been like, kind of working on this idea of self-supervised running of uh, from video for for ten years, and and you know only made significant progress in the last two or three. And actually, you've you've mentioned that there's a lot of interesting breakthroughs that can happen without having access to a lot of compute. Yeah. So if, if you're interested in doing a PhD and this kind of stuff, there's a lot of possibilities still yeah. to do innovative work. So, like, what advice would you give to a undergrad that's looking to uh, go to grad school and do a PhD? So, basically, I've listed them already. Uh, this idea of how do you train a world model by observation, mm -hmm. and you don't have to train necessarily on gigantic data sets or. I mean, it could turn out to be necessary to actually train on large data sets to have emergent properties like like we have with LLMs. But I think there is a lot of good ideas that can be done without necessarily scaling up. Then there is how do you do planning with a learned world model. If the world the system evolves in is not the physical world, but is the world of, let's say, the internet or you know uh, some sort of. Uh, world of where an action consists in doing a search in a search engine or interrogating a, data set, a database or running a simulation or calling a calculator or solving a differential equation. How do you get a system to actually plan a sequence of actions to you know, give the solution to a problem? Um, and so the, the question of planning is not just a, a question of planning physical actions. It could be you know, planning actions to use tools for a dialogue system or for any kind of intelligent system. And um, th there's some work on this, but not like uh, not a huge amount. Some work at FAIR, uh, um, one called Toolformer, which uh, was a couple years ago, and some more recent work on planning. Uh, but um, but I, I don't think we have like a, a good solution for any of that. Then there is the question of hierarchical planning. So uh, the example I, I mentioned of you know planning a trip from New York to Paris. Mm -hmm. That's hierarchical, but almost every action that we take in involves hierarchical planning in some in some sense. And we really have absolutely no idea how to do this. Like there's zero demonstration of hierarchical planning uh, in AI, where the various levels of representations that are necessary have been learned. We can do like two level hierarchy hierarchical planning when we design the two the two levels. So for example, you have like a, a dog like robot, right? You want it to go from the living room to the kitchen. You can plan a path that avoids the obstacle. And then um, you can send this to a lower lower level planner that figures out how to move the legs to mm. kind of follow that trajectories, right? So that works, but that two level planning is designed by hand, right? Um, we specify what the proper levels of abstraction, the representation at each level of abstraction has have to be. How do you learn this? How do you learn that hierarchical representation of action plans? Right. We, you know, with Covnets and deep learning, we we can train the system to learn hierarchical representations of percepts. Mm -hmm. What is the equivalent when what you're trying to represent are action plans? For action plans, yeah. So you want you want basically a, a robot dog or humanoid robot that turns on and travels from New York to Paris all by itself. For example. All right. It might have some uh, trouble at the at the TSA, but yeah. No, but even doing something fairly simple like a household task, sure, like, like you know, uh, cooking or something. Yeah, that, there's a lot involved. It's a super complex task. Yeah. We take, and once again, we take it for granted.